I want to preach today. Um, I don't think it'll be long, but I'm just going to give you what God has laid in my heart. Three things to pray when you're discouraged. We're all in a season, if you'll be honest, a discouraging season. And I told Brother Gary this morning, I said, I feel like that my job right now as the pastor, and I want you all to lean in and listen, is to keep the train on the track. To keep the train on the track. And listen, it's hard. Y'all pray for me. It, it's, 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 it's a difficult season right now. And I'm just going to kind of take out my heart this morning and put it before you guys and just be honest with you. I think we're all dealing with discouragement, if you will be honest. If you will be honest. So three things that I pray, that I pray. Now, you may not, you may pray and feel, feel sorry for yourself, but here's the deal. I've learned, man, sometimes you got to preach yourself out of the ditch. Sometimes, man, you just got to grab the horns of the altar and say, God, here's the deal. I believe in you. Amen. So three things to pray when you're discouraged. And church, listen to me. We, we got to know how to encourage ourselves. If you're waiting for somebody else to encourage you, whew, you're going to be, <laughs> it's bad. You got to learn how to build what? The Bible says, build yourself up in the most high faith. The most high faith. The most high faith. So we've got to learn to preach to yourself, encourage yourself, and build yourself up. So here's what I do as your pastor. And you say, well, Brian, this sermon's about you. I'm just telling you what I have to do in this season where I'm at right now to keep the train on the tracks. Because watch, how many of y'all getting hit from the north, east, south, and west, underneath, over top? I thought I was at the right place. And if your hand's not up, watch this. Hang in there because you're next. And please, you can get up here and preach. But I'm just going to be honest. I've always been like this type of preacher. I'm like, listen, man, when I, I, I'm just trying to give you keys how to get out of the ditch. So three things that I pray in the most discouraging moments and times in my life, when I'm, when I'm battling depression, can I get real with y'all? I battle it. I know y'all look at me, and I tell you this all the time. Y'all think I'm Superman. I own a phone booth, and I got a cape on my back. I don't. I don't. I fight depression. I fight discouragement. I fight sickness. I fight things in life. Life sucks. See, y'all will listen to that one word more than you listen to what I'm getting ready to give you, the points, how to help you. Most people pay more. I feel the Holy Ghost. Most people pay more attention to the sin than they do the testimony getting out of the ditch. That's a good word. That's free today. Most people look at the sin, then they do the testimony standing before them. So I'm just a testimony this morning. If God can do it for me, he can do it for you. So what do I pray when I'm in the ditch? What do I pray when I'm battling depression? What do I pray when, when I'm telling you it feels like the world has come against you? What do I pray when I want to give up? Huh. Now right, let's go. Number one. Y'all with me? Say I'm with you. This sermon's real. Yeah. I remind myself, Jesus is with me. Yeah. Now, I know y'all, y'all, everybody good out here. Listen, I'm just telling you, I have to remind myself. I have to remind myself that Jesus is, I feel the Holy Ghost. He is with me. I know y'all love me, but there's somebody out there who died for me who got put in a borrowed tomb, but Jenna, he got back up on the third day. Nobody else has done that for me. And I got to give him praise this morning. I know it sounds easy, but I have to remind myself, Jesus is with me. Can I preach this for a moment? Whether you believe it or not this morning, he's with me right now. I know you may not be able to see him, but sometimes you just got to be able to feel him. You may not be able to hear his voice, but you can feel him breathing down your neck. Jesus is with me. Even as I'm preaching right now, Jesus is with me. And I got to tell myself that. I'll walk through the house. I say, God, you're with me. You're with me. Right now, where I'm at, where I'm standing here, Jesus is with me. Everybody say that. Jesus is with me. Come on, say it again. Jesus is with me. Y'all say it again. I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus is with me. You got to tell yourself that. You got to tell your, that speaks volumes to me. That encourages me 
that helps me, that builds me up, that gives me hope. In this very moment, this very moment right now, Jesus is here. Don't take that lightly. Because he will not always strive with mankind. He will not always strive with mankind. There's going to be a day when the Holy Ghost is going to be raptured out of this place. And that's when hell is going to happen on earth. I love this because listen to me. This morning on Facebook Live, you may be driving your car down the road. Jesus is with you. You may be at home in a lonely season of your life. You may be a teenager like my daughter. I can't imagine. We, we, listen, teenagers are in a battle right now. We think it's just adults, but teenagers are in a battle right now. But listen to me, Jesus is with me. Hallelujah. Jesus is with me. I believe that. He's in your house. I love this. He's everywhere. See, Satan can't be everywhere. That's why he sends his demons everywhere. But Jesus can be here. He can be in China. He can be in Africa. He's everywhere. Everybody say, he's everywhere. Yeah, he's everywhere. Sometimes I got to look in the mirror, and I wrote this in my personal notes. I want to be honest with y'all this morning. Sometimes I got to look in the mirror when I'm facing a dark season in my life, and I feel the weight of the world. I feel the weight of ministry, the weight of marriage, the weight of COVID-19. When I feel the weight coming down on me, I will look in the mirror. And here's what I say. Y'all don't have to do this. You can write it down for your note table. I'm just saying what I do. I look in the mirror. Sometimes you got to square yourself up. Sometimes the, the person looking back at you is the one that needs to change. And when I look in the mirror, I got to square myself up and say, I know Jesus is with me, but Brian Rafferty, God loves you. God is for you. God is with you. I just got to tell myself that. And listen, somebody needs it this morning. This morning, somebody needs this word. Somebody needs this word. God is for you. God is with you. Hallelujah. And God loves me. I'm going to say it again. Like God loves me. God is for me. And God is with me. God loves me. God is for me. And God is with me. If you say that long enough, that flesh will shut up and that spirit will rise up. You just got to do it. You got to do that. So listen, I, this is what I said. My, this is my sermon. I can preach how I need to preach it. This is what I do. And some of you, I can look at you, you are facing some tight moments in your life right now. Listen, you better have Jesus number one in your life. It's hard enough with him, I can't imagine without. I just tell him, Jesus is with me. I know y'all love me. I know y'all are here. But Jesus is with me. He is with me. I just, I, when I'm discouraged, I remind myself that Jesus is with me. Number two, this is a good one right here. This is, I like the first one too, but y'all get this one too. God is at the bottom. He's underneath me. And I, not only is Jesus with me, watch this, so good. I'm going to back yourself with scripture. He's under me. Was, Allison, I thought about you and Jimmy. I did. So I'm not, it's not just me, it's you too, it's all of us. Listen, he's underneath me. Deuteronomy chapter 33, can I preach this for a moment? It's so good. In your Bible, Moses was given his last, his last sermon. And I thought about myself. What would be the last words that I could give? I'm not, I'm not, I'm here. But you know what I'm saying? If I was giving you the last sermon, the last words, here's Moses talking to the children of Israel. They have circled the same mountain for 40 years, the same leader for 40 years. And here's Moses looking at the children of Israel. And the children of Israel are about ready to cross over. They're going to the promised land. And Moses says these words, it broke my heart. He says, I love y'all, but I can't go with you. And I thought about this as a pastor. I love you, but watch. He says, I can't cross over with you. So Moses starts preaching. I love this. He starts preaching. He says, we serve the God, the God of the mountains. The God of the mountains. God blessed Abraham on a mountain. Y'all remember that story in Genesis 22? God provided a lamb on a mountain. The Ten Commandments were written on a mountain. Fire fell from heaven on a mountain. And Moses says, he said, God rides in on the high places. Heaven is high. He rides in on the high places. But I love this. All of a sudden, everybody say all of a sudden. 
It's the hangman leaning in, leaning in. He says these words. He says these words. Now I'm going to switch gears. I know he's the God of the mountains, but he's also the God of the valleys. Listen to this. I need to remind you. He said, I know you're saved. I know you're getting ready to enter into the promised land. But that doesn't mean, y'all listen to me, that doesn't mean that ministry, that marriage, that church, that life, that work is always going to be a mountaintop. The church has been lied to. We've been lied to. Serve God and everything will be worked out. Watch this. Nowhere in Scripture can you find that. Nowhere in Scripture. So Moses said, hold on time. He said, we're going to take a praise break here in just a moment. But he said, I know you've seen the Ten Commandments written on the mountain. I know you've seen fire fall from heaven on a mountain. I know that you've seen Abraham and Isaac on a mountain. But he said these words. I want to read it to you. He throws this verse at him. It's so good. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 26 and 27. If you're a note taker, please write this down. I'm reading now the New American Standard Bible. There is none like the God of Israel. How many of y'all can testify? There is none like Jehovah. There ain't no God like Jehovah. <laughs> There's no God like him who rides, watch this, the heavens, the mountains to your help. Here, listen to this. And through the skies in his majesty, the eternal God is a dwelling place. Listen, and underneath you are the everlasting arms. Uh, Y'all didn't get that. I know he's on the mountains. I know he's up there. I know the Ten Commandments was written. I know all of us have had mountaintop experiences. But I love Moses because Moses said, let me be a preacher right now. Let me be a pastor right now. I know you got good days, but there's also going to be bad days. But he says, watch, I love this. In other words, no matter how far you go down, God is underneath you. Come on, somebody. No matter how hard you fall, no matter what people think about you, no matter what topic says about you, no matter what anybody's coming against you, God says, no matter how far you fall, I feel the Holy Ghost. He said these words, the, you go low, but I go lower. Now, I thought about the people who are on drugs. And I thought about the people who, are, who, who, had, who was alcoholics. And pornography and all the bad things that everybody says, oh, God, don't talk about that. Listen, I started thinking about this. So good, Destiny. I've always heard this statement. They got to hit bottom. Y'all right. think about that verse. Hold on. Lean in. What is their bottom? God bless I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Their bottom, no matter how far they fall. No matter how drunk they get. No matter if they walk in this church high as a, a kite. I'm telling you, hallelujah, as low as they go. If they look around, if they start just looking around, they're going to find a set of God arms, hallelujah, right under them, holding them through it all. Somebody better give God praise. <laughs> Woo! I worked hard on this. No matter how low they go. Jesus is lower. Y'all chew on that one for a while. Oh, you don't know my son. God's got him. You don't know my family. God's got him. God's under your children. God's under this church. God's under my wife. God's under his home. My God, he's got us. Hallelujah. Mm. He's under us. And I want y'all right now, if you can, just close your eyes. And I want you to think about the bottom. And right now, you've got a set of everlasting arms under you, holding you up. And watch this. He refuses to watch you fail. Yeah. Yeah. God is holding us up. And I wrote this down. I've already said it, but I'm going to say it again. As low as you can go, Jesus is lower. So what is their bottom? Maybe, maybe we've been praying wrong. Maybe we need to say, God, let them hit bottom. <laughs> I know this is reverse psychology. Maybe we need to say, God, let them go. Let them fall. Because I know them as low as they can go. There's a set of everlasting arms under them. 
Let him go. My God, I, I preach myself happy this morning. We need this word. Jesus is with me. Jesus is underneath me. When I'm down, when I'm depressed and things are not looking good, I wrote this in my, I preach myself. I stopped by 3145. I know I say this all the time, but I'm here today by appointment on assignment from God. When you're down and you're low and you're in the valley, yes, Jesus is with you, but let me tell you some good news, some better news. He's under you. He's under us. Jesus is underneath it all. Ephesians 4, you're reading your Bible. He even went to hell. You don't hear preaching on this, but it's, it's in your Bibles. He made a, a pass by in hell. Listen, this is good. Say this out. Ephesians chapter 4. See, they nailed him to the cross. Everybody say, yeah, he, they did. That's five. Everybody else say, yeah, they, they did. Yeah, they, they nailed him to the cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And while he was in the tomb, the Bible says he really wasn't dead. Instead of him just lollygagging around and this, that, and the other, he made a visit to hell. He made a visit to, he said, Satan, I know you thought you killed me. I know you thought you had my family. I know you thought you had my children. But I just stopped by today to get the hell, the keys to hell, and I'm giving them to my children. And when you're under their feet, I'm telling you, God is a good God. Y'all need to give God praise this morning. I'm telling you. He'll never drop you. I just need somebody to believe that. When he swept through hell, he made an announcement. You got to loose your hold. You have no power over my church, over my children. Matter of fact, they got the keys to the kingdom. I highly advise y'all to start using the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. Keys to the kingdom. So, my last thing I preach to myself. I know, G I say, Brian, Keith Rafferty, Jesus is with you. Everybody say that Jesus is with me. Everybody say it again, Jesus is with me. Number two, you better, you, better have a, you better look in the mirror. And that person looking back at you, you better deal with them. You, you better deal with them. You better deal with them. I know Jesus is with me, but number two, he's under me. I still feel that in my spirit. He's under me. No matter how low I go, he's lower. Mm. That'll make you think different, won't it? And that's what I preach to myself. He's with me. And he's under me. And this third one, I have a lot of, we have a lot of debate about this one. But here's the debate. God's right and you're wrong. <laughs> I'm so glad we, we graduated from vacation Bible school. I'm so glad that the GAs and the RAs and the AAs and all the Awana programs that we finally graduated into some mature Christians. Number three, here's what I tell myself. I have faith for this. I'm going to say it again. Yes, Jesus is with me. Yes, he's under me. But I've got the faith for this. In Romans chapter 12, the Bible says God has given everyone, every, all, every, everybody here today, listen to me, lean in, a measure of faith. Do y'all know what a measure of faith will do in a move a mountain? You know what a measure of faith will do? It'll allow you to walk on water. You know what a measure of faith will do? It can call down fire from heaven. Do you know what a measure of faith can do? Huh. In other words, anything, listen to me, anything you face in this life, anything you have fa you're facing in this life, God has given you enough faith to overcome that situation. I'm, I'm, I, when I counsel people, it's pretty quick. We don't have bean bags in my office, and we don't have all that. Well, listen, because when they come in, I'm like, here's the deal. Do you love God? Yeah. You trust God? Yeah. He's given you the faith. Get over it. But it's quick, isn't it? That's quick. So watch this. No matter what. No matter, everybody say, no matter what. Y'all better listen. No matter what. No matter what. If I'm in the lion's den... 
If I'm in a fire, if I'm in water over my head, things ain't looking good at work. Things ain't looking good at church. Things ain't looking good. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Diabetes, bad doctor's report, sickness, depression, you name it. Watch. You name it. See, I've done lost y'all. Some of y'all are like, he ain't going through what I'm going through. Tell God that. Tell God his son's blood is not enough to get you through that situation. Go on. I, I, I. Yeah. Tell God. That's okay. That's my ADHD. It's all right. Y'all tired me. You should know it by now. Tell God that his son's blood is not enough to get you through your situation. Go on. T tell him. God, you don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, my son died for it. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? I'll bless you in, I'll bless you out, I'll bless you up, I'll bless you down. That's God. And watch this. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Hi, I'm Brian Rafferty, and I approve this message. Do what y'all want to do. I'm just telling y'all. I'm just telling you, listen to me. Yes, Jesus is with me. Yes, Jesus is under me. And he's given me enough faith to get through anything I'm up against right now. Y'all chew on that one for a while. And let, let me go, can I go deeper? Everybody say, yeah. This is so good. I, th I start thinking about, in the Bible, Peter, rowdy Peter. Man, yeah, that's what, Peter. Here's Peter. He cussed God. He doubted God. He denied God. He went, he, he done a lot. He tried to kill a dude and cut his ear off. Yeah, he was naming through his throat, y'all. He was going to kill him. He had the heart of a murderer. <laughs> Listen to this. Peter, Jesus shows up and starts talking to Peter, start dialoguing. And, and, and Jesus made a statement that stuck in my spirit this week. He said these words, um, Peter, Satan is trying to sift you like wheat. He's trying to rip you apart. He's trying to kill, steal, and destroy from you. And notice Jesus. He didn't say, Peter, I'm praying for your church attendance. He, he didn't say, hey, Peter, uh, just do the best that you can. Jesus didn't say, hey, I'm praying that, that you're financially stable. He said these words, Peter, and I wrote this down. I'm praying that your faith fail you not. Mm. He didn't pray for his finances, his home, his children. He says, Peter, you're in a season. I feel that. You're in a time of your life. Elkhorn, we're in a time right now in this season called COVID. Cases has gone crazy. People are dying. But here's what I know, and I'm sticking to this. I believe if Jesus Christ had one word to pray over the church, it would not be, I hope you're faithful at church. I hope that your finances are good. I hope, no, he would say this word, Elkhorn, my children, I'm praying that your faith fail you not. I'm praying that you would stand when everybody else is sitting down. I pray there'll be a fire in your bones when everybody else say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to the house of God. We're going to worship him in spirit and truth. <laughs> Settle down, bro. No. 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 Because I have found this out. If I listen to the world and I try to be a, a good little preacher and just stand behind the pulpit and give you three little points and a benediction and you go home, but I'm here today to tell you, you've got the keys to the kingdom. I'm here today to tell somebody here today, you've got enough faith that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what, Jesus has given you enough faith to get through that situation. Somebody say amen. Somebody give God praise. Come on. I'm praying that your faith will fail you not. Here's what I've noticed. You know why people quit church? They put their faith in man. You know why people quit church? They put their faith in the building. You know why people get pride in their life? They start getting a little money. 
They start getting to the point where they used to be passionate about God and all of a sudden the blessings, the blessings, the blessings, the blessings will overtake where God has brought you from. You got a pastor in front of you, I know where God has brought me from. I know what the Lord has done for me. And I know what he's still doing for me. And so if I had to give y'all, and this is it, praise team, you guys come. Do not lose your faith. Listen to me. Do not lose your faith. Everybody say that. Do not lose your faith. Come on. Come on, everybody say, do not lose your faith. Jesus is with me. Hallelujah. Jesus is under me. Yes, he is. And I've got enough faith to do whatever it takes to get through any situation in my life. Those are game changer points, by the way. Those are game changer points. Because I'm telling you. So when I'm down, and here's, by the way, he said, little faith. Matter of fact, there's, there's, there's two kinds of faith. There's little faith and much faith. Little faith and much faith, little faith and much faith, little faith and much faith. Those are the two faiths in the Bible. And God says, I've given you both of them. Sometimes just a little faith. And sometimes much faith. And so I'm asking you guys today, where are you at? Y'all can act pretty. <laughs> you, you can sit there and go, oh, Brian, man, praise God. Everything's good. You hold on long enough. You'll find out the valley. Yeah, you will. So when I'm down in the valley, when I'm battling depression, when I'm discouraged, when I'm in a ditch, when I feel like everything's turned upside down, I can't go on no longer, I want to quit. I feel like Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. Jeremiah says, God, I'll serve you all my life. Lord, I'm a blessed man. God, you're the greatest. You're the God of the mountain. I mean, verses 1 through 10, he was blowing it up. And then all of a sudden, one verse later, verse 11 through 20. <laughs> 11 through 20. I wish I was dead. I can't take it no more. How many of y'all ever feel like Jeremiah? You just feel like, Lord, God, I, I love you, but I just can't take it no more. Come on. Lord, I love you. I know you're the God of the mountain. God, I know where my help comes from. But God, I need a God of the valley right now, God. And I know I've hit bottom. I know I can't take no more. But God, if I'll just look around, there's some arms under me. There's some big old God arms under me. And I know you're going to pick me up. You're going to bless me up and pray me up. But God, I need your help right now. So here's what I do. Here's what I tell myself. Here's what I preach to myself. Here's how I encourage myself. I'm going to be honest with you. If I did not do this, huh, I would have quit a long time ago. Are y'all okay for some truth? Right? how are you standing? Because Jesus is with me. Because Jesus Christ is under me. Hey! And because no matter what's going on in my life, He's given me enough faith to get through the situation. Y'all better give God some praise in here today. I'm telling you, you may not need this sermon right now, but there's going to come a day you will. Yes, you will. So, uh, everybody say, Jesus is with me. Now the rest of you say, Jesus is with me. Jesus is at the bottom. Yeah, everybody say, Jesus is underneath me. And he's given me enough faith to get through, to get over whatever's going on in my life. Isn't that good? That's so good. It's so good. So I'm going to ask every one of you today, go, go, go look in the mirror. Go look in the mirror. And listen, if you don't like the person looking back, there's your first sign you got something going on. You've got to love the person looking back at you. How, watch, how can we love others if you don't love the person looking back? You gotta love each you, you gotta love yourself. You gotta love yourself. So go to that mirror 
And I want y'all to keep these three points. This is, it's, a, it's a game changer. It's just a game changer. I want you to look at them and say, and just mention Brian Rafferty. Jesus is with you. He's under you. And no matter what you're going through right now, He's given you the faith. 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 He's given. I'm going to say it because somebody grabs it this morning. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your valley's like, no matter what your children's like, no matter what church is like, God has given us the faith to get through it. Somebody give him praise. Amen. I'm done. Come on, stand to your feet all over there. Come on, come on. Don't, don't stop praising. Come on, just praise him. Just praise him. Come on, just praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. So I asked uh, the praise team to do me a favor. And I hope y'all are ready. <laughs> he said, me too. I asked him to sing a song the anchor holds. Because here's what this pastor knows. When you throw an anchor over a ship, a boat, or whatever you're in, it goes straight to the bottom. But how many of you know it can only go so far? There's somebody holding the anchor at the bottom. And I don't know where y'all are at this morning, but you got to be honest. That person looking back at you in that mirror, you got to do a heart check right now. The anchor holds. Gary Reynolds, I'm standing on the anchor holds. Elkhorn Baptist Church, the anchor holds. Hallelujah. Leadership, the anchor holds. Hallelujah. Brian Keith Rafferty, the anchor holds. Amen. Nancy Salee, the anchor holds. Hallelujah. Walker Salee, the anchor holds. Bobby Walker, the anchor holds. I feel that in my spirit this morning. Somebody needs to hear this. God is under your marriage. God is under your children. God is under it all. God is under it all. I just need a church to make her mind up this morning that Jesus is with us. He's under us. And no matter what Elkhorn is facing, God will get us through it. I don't, if I was Satan, I'd go, boy, I got them right where I want them. Because sometimes you just got to outshout fear. Sometimes you got to outshout your, your most darkest moments because that's the real you. When you can praise Him when nobody else is looking, you got something. So I want y'all to sing this and may God fill this atmosphere. May God fill this altar up. And here it is. I'm done. Y'all ready? This side, the anchor holds. The anchor holds. Woo! The anchor holds. <laughs> this side, the anchor holds. So in Jesus' name, may God love on y'all. The anchor holds. Greg. Y'all take us into the presence of God. God's got me. He's under me. And he's given me the faith to get through it. In Jesus' name.